For the first time, I didn't bother to actually clean up my desk. So let's get started. Hey guys, you're probably as excited as me after hearing that actually Octoprint is gonna be fully supported on Raspberry Pi 02W. But that caused more questions than actually had answers, because the first questions you're going to ask, well, it's only have a one USB, can I connect USB hub, will that affect things, can I set settings to 1080p and stream over Wi-Fi, or do I have to... Well, that's the reason I'm doing this video, and for the last couple of days I've been testing various scenarios, including multiple cameras, adapters, etc, to find out what is the best configuration of running Octoprint on Raspberry Pi 02. I guess it's time to share these findings with you. And just before we started, I've separated the video into chapters so you could jump into the section that applies to you, or just stick around and keep on watching as we go through various scenarios. Let's start with a baseline for the, these tests. Obviously I'm going to start with the Raspberry Pi itself, just directly connected via cable to my Ender 3 printer, something I covered in here, and this printer is upgraded, but it's not going to matter that much. Now, in my test scenario, the first one, I'm not going to use any camera, just I want to gauge the performance benchmark and see what our stats are like and whether you should uh, use it this way. And because I don't need extra benches, I'll clean up later, I figured I'm just going to pull out the filament and print with a clean hot air. Obviously that's not going to give me any results at first, but I will identify the most straining scenario and then I will print a single Benji. Currently I have the latest version of Octoprint, that's 1.7.2 and a couple of plugins installed to emulate the average use case scenarios. My plugins include Octolabs, one of the most popular one, Bed Visualizer, and there's MQTT plugin, I have also Spool Manager, and Resource Monitor, which I'm going to use to, well, monitor Raspberry Pi 02W resources, and kind of figure out how impactful the running our Octo print server is. So it's time to load up the cleaner and start printing in a default configuration. As you can see on attached draft, the CPU of the Raspberry Pi 02W was, well, basically idling. For the most part, it was using anywhere between 6 to 10% of a single core, which equals to even lower percentage if you split that into four different threads. Memory-wise, it takes around 100 megabytes of RAM, so you'll end up having around 200 of, uh, megabytes of RAM to spare. And in this scenario, I was also using Wi-Fi. I haven't noticed any problems uh, using the web interface for Octoprint as well, which is no surprising after all, it's just a simple web server. Now, temperature-wise, it's what you would expect. The temperature was pretty much idling. I haven't seen any jumps. The ambient temperature was about 21 degrees. And you can see the temperature of the Raspberry Pi on the screen. After simulating the print for some time, I figured I have enough data to kind of establish the baseline, so it's time to step up a notch. In my next scenario, I wanted to put a more demanding spin on Octoprint, adding the web stream. And I have two cameras, and I'm using Raspberry Pi cameras, the high quality one and the normal one, for a reason. Well, mostly because you only have one uh, USB port on your Raspberry Pi device, and this is probably the camera you're gonna end up using. It's not the cheapest and ideal option because uh, PCAM costs around 25 pounds and the high quality camera sensor alone is 50 quid plus extra 20 for a basic lens. But if you have them kicking around, then you won't have to worry about the USB hub and you can connect the printer directly and use the ribbon uh, cable to connect your Raspberry Pi camera. By default, the web stream is limited to 480p and that was my first run. And in all honesty, I haven't noticed that much of an impact on the Raspberry Pi itself during the use. The stats were pretty much similar, and I even opened the web stream in another browser window, because if you're not aware, the Octoprint will close the stream if the stream window isn't open in the Raspberry Pi web interface. So looking back at the data with 480p stream, I only notice increased usage on RAM, and by increased I only mean 10 extra megs, so it's not something you would be worried about. So in my next run, I decided to change the camera resolution to 1080p. You can do that by modifying the Octopi text file in a boot uh, directory. 
After setting everything up, I've connected Raspberry Pi HQ camera and recorded my uh, simulated print again. And this is where I've noticed the first difference. I had the web stream open in a separate tab so it would continue running, because as soon as you close the stream, the CPU percentage drops down to around 6 to 10%, as in a Octop print instance without the camera. So I kept it open for the direction of the print. Now, checking the latency of the print, I've noticed there would be around 2 to 3 seconds of the latency, mostly caused by Wi Fi. I also noticed a couple of interface stutters which weren't affecting the print itself, uh, but that basically tells you that the Wi Fi element on that board is struggling with sending that 1080p stream, crank up to 25 frames per second, and keeping everything going. From the attached graphs, you can tell that CPU was using a little bit more resources this time around. Whenever the stream was open, it would peak at around 25 to 45% on a single core, and when the stream was closed, it would immediately return back to the normal operation. Now the usage of the memory was still the same, drawing extra 10 megabytes of RAM, and the temps in these scenarios would also go up by 10 degrees. For the next test, I needed a USB camera, and I've opted out for the 1080p Logitech C920. Obviously, to connect that, I needed a USB hub, which means both the printer itself and the camera would be connected through the same USB port. Now, technically, the bandwidth of the port should be more than enough to handle it, but, you know, it's all technical, so let's actually put that to practice. And to no surprise or whatsoever, everything was behaving just like when I was using Raspberry Pi cameras. When the stream was at 1080p, I could see a significant use of the first core of the Raspberry Pi 02W, uh, spanning from 25% to 45%, nothing unusual, with the temperature being slightly cranked up and the uh, RAM being at uh, 10 uh, megabytes more in terms of overall usage than uh, without webcam rolling. But as I've tested multiple USB cameras, I also run into one issue. One of my USB cameras has LED lights built in, which means it will draw significantly more current than the one without it. Add that to the fact that I'm currently powering everything from a single USB hub, and it caused a web stream to crash, uh, mostly because there was not enough current to support USB camera. The print would continue as normal, however the camera would stop be re being responsive, and if you're planning on using any cameras with built-in LEDs, you probably want to consider a powered hub instead. Previously, I've mentioned problems while using Wi-Fi and 1080p stream from the camera. That was the case as well when I would find occasional stutters with uh, Octopi interface due to Wi-Fi performance which means in the next scenario I wanted to use a USB to Ethernet adapter to eliminate Wi-Fi from that equation. This means I would plug another device to USB hub in order to connect my internet. To my surprise, everything worked really well. Obviously, I avoided adding the camera with built-in LEDs to not to overstrain the USB port, but after adding USB to Ethernet adapter, I quickly powered down the Wi-Fi to make sure I'm not getting any false readings, and everything performed great. What's interesting on one occasion, actually the Octopi registered that link as a one gigabit connection. There were small changes in the resource monitor this time around. In terms of performance, the CPU was reporting pretty much the same as in previous scenarios. Now, the difference was that RAM required additional 10 megabytes of RAM to support the USB Ethernet adapter, but you would still end up with over 170 megabytes of RAM free, so that's not a problem. Network was streaming now in high capacity, but there were no stutters due to the fact that, well, everything was running smoother, and the temperature stayed pretty much the same. By this point, I ran out of configuration, so I decided to load up the filament and put the octoprint through the real benchmark. Yeah, benchmark. That's what I'm going to call it from now on. So I identified the most straining scenarios, and that was the Raspberry Pi HQ cam running Octolabs, so we could take nice pictures and put additional strain on the system. Then I would use USB hub to connect the uh, 3D printer, and the Ethernet adapter to use up extra RAM. And in this configuration, I started the print. 
The print itself took around two hours with web stream enabled to put extra pressure on it and time lapse taking pictures every 10 seconds. You can actually see that on the CPU graph. I'm pleased to report that the Benji look spectacular. There was no problems whatsoever and, well, the print has been completed on time. Unfortunately, I do not have the time lapse saved because I've messed up, but that was something that I've done by my own volition and there was no Octoprint fault whatsoever. Before I let you go to explore other videos, obviously of mine, there are a couple of tips I would like to share with you. I know you're gonna save some money by not buying Raspberry Pi 4 and get going for the 02W instead, but consider if you want to use a special webcams, consider a USB hub that is powered, that can help you a lot. But there is another trick you can do to save up a little bit of current. You can cover up the power lines in your USB cable when connecting to your 3D printer. It will save you a little bit of current and hopefully that will help your webcam to be more stable. Another thing is running the uh, Octoprint wirelessly. Now, it might work well when the Raspberry Pi is on the outside, but sooner or later you probably want to put that board somewhere on the inside. And a lot of these printers have met metal parts and enclosures that can make the Wi-Fi performance even worse. So consider using wired internet because uh, the performance of that was really, really good. And if you can connect USB hub with a cable, this is the way I would suggest you to do so. Lastly, there is a couple of interesting examples of upgrades that you can perform to actually have this running better. And I've already covered them in a different video, so I'm going to populate this corner with a couple of examples of upgrades that you should consider if you want to run Octoprint uh, server with your Ender 3 or Ender 3 V2. I guess it's fair to say that the Raspberry Pi 02W is a perfect board to actually run a Octoprint server for individual uh, printer. But looking at the performance data itself, I bet you could run two printers from a single board as long as you don't care that much about 1080p streaming. But before you go for good, there is one more thing I would like to share this picture. It's an enclosure I'm working on and in a couple of weeks you should get more details about it and it's especially cool because it's gonna be, well, done my way. I know the IKEA lag table's been done before but not like this. And since I do not have a posting schedule, you know what to do. Use YouTube tools provided to keep in touch, leave me a comment if you would like to, and follow me on any given social media for a couple of reasons. First, you can start a conversation anytime you like. Second, YouTube likes to filter out the comments and I have no ability to oversee that unfortunately for some reason, so if your comments disappear, well, just let me know via other channels. As for now guys, thanks so much for watching and I'll definitely see you in the next video. Take care, bye!